As I build my coaching business, I want to know how to effectively serve clients and make more money doing it. This podcast will pull back the curtain to reveal exactly how successful coaches are building their empires. Join me as I engage with top coaches from all over the world to discover their secrets. No theatrics and no theory, just real life strategy. My name is William Winterton, and this is Coaching Success Radio. Hey, Coaching Success Radio, welcome to the program. Welcome to another future success story in our series. And this young lady is Jennifer Rodriguez. Uh, she is just starting her coaching business. She has a lot of different unique qualities to her business and what she's looking to do. Uh, she is a psychic medium. She is a hypnotherapist. Uh, she's also super involved and in tune with helping people discover their soul, discover their purpose, and really become enlightened, uh, overcoming addiction through sources other than just going through traditional routes of like Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, using methods that are a little bit more unconventional. So her story is unique. It's really uh, interesting to hear somebody who's coming from this perspective, but it works. And it's something that if something she's able to connect with other people who are in the same realm, the same mindset that she's in, uh, it's a fantastic way to reach out and find clients that are deeply aligned uh, with her purpose. So I'm super, super excited. I love this, uh, love this story that Jennifer Rodriguez is sharing with us, and I hope it resonates with you. Would you mind just sharing a little bit of your backstory and what kind of got you to making the decision to become a coach? <laughs> well, and I think a lot, um, a lot of coaches can relate. You know, we kind of go through the trenches on our own and find that we are relatable to many people who are struggling with, you know, a common kind of issue. And so for me, I um, am about 14, 15 months into my own recovery from alcoholism. And I've been on a spiritual journey for the last five years. So I, I got to a point where um, I really kind of just hit a plateau as far as my own spiritual path and, and what I was able to accomplish. And once I figured out that alcoholism was kind of holding me back and that I was also using it to kind of cover up a lot of the stuff I was uncomfortable with, I was able to just kind of propel my own spiritual journey a little bit further. So I really feel that a lot of people in recovery or people who struggle with alcoholism and addiction are really kind of facing more of a spiritual, you know, like crossroads. And some people choose to get diverted into that a disease of addiction and alcoholism, and some people choose to recover. And, you know, I think all the 12 step programs out there, they're wonderful, but they can only take you so far. So what I want to focus on is helping people go beyond that and really just kind of dig deep and, and do all the healing that they need to do in order to live a fulfilling spiritual life. What you just said is really powerful just because I think a lot of the audience will resonate with this as well, is that when you decide to become a coach, a lot of that is birthed out of your own experiences right. and the things that you've had to go through. So you said it's been 15 months uh, since yeah. you've been, which is fantastic. That's it awesome. Is, yeah, uh, every day is great. Oh, that's, that's a, that's just, like you said, it's, a, it's a, glad to be alive and it's a, it's a huge blessing. And, um, what were, whenever you started making that transition and you decided that you wanted to reach out and help other people, what were some of the things that you started doing to take you on that path to becoming a coach? I currently do. So I am a psychic medium. Um, some people don't really understand that, but I do work at a store a couple of my, uh, days a week and I offer readings there. I'm also a hypnotherapist. And so um, through that store locally, I've offered to set up meetings for people just to come and have open discussion. Because um, if we go to like a 12 step meeting and start talking about past lives or chakras or <laughs> you know crystals, they're probably going to like really wonder where, you know, what we're on when we walk through the doors. So but there are a lot of us out there that do follow that type of path and are in recovery. You know, the, the more religious aspect of it may not appeal to all of us. So I feel like having a, a local meeting where we can openly discuss some of these topics is going to be beneficial for a lot of us. Um, that's, I, I'm starting my first one September 9th, and I already have a, a good little group that's excited to join us for that. So I'm really excited. Um, I myself want to start a podcast, um, with one of my best friends who's also in recovery, also spiritually minded and really just have, um, 
free flow conversation about some of the topics that come up in our in our everyday conversations because they're pretty <laughs> pretty varied. But um, you know, just really being able to reach out to people. I haven't quite got to the point where I have a client base yet, and um, I think that's probably the biggest struggle. But I know by starting these little projects, I'll be able to start reaching the people that I'm meant to work with. So have you done anything on social media to start boosting yourself a little bit and getting some recognition out there? Or have you done pretty much everything locally face-to-face? -face? Um, before I really kind of narrowed in on what my niche should be, I, you know, it was kind of just posting inspirational stuff on Instagram and little videos about like kind of who I am on Facebook. And the website's done. Um, it's, it's all, you know, it's presentable. So I, I can direct someone to it. But it's not, I haven't, um, I haven't narrowed down the verbiage on there in order to really narrow in on the, the customer base I'm looking at. That's kind of a challenge though. You're not in, you're not in a unique situation. And in fact, people right. who are coaching for a long time, I mean, I've worked with clients who have been coaching for years and are still struggling to get the client base up there and get, you know, people attracted to them. So it's, it's not an unusual thing at all. And it's nothing, right. especially when you're just getting started to be like, Oh my gosh, talk to me a little bit about this event that's happening this uh, September uh, program. Tell me a little bit more, uh, a little bit more about that. Right. So I'm just, I'm the way I'm envisioning it is really just like a meet and greet, find other people who are like-minded. Um, you know, we have a lot of, everyone knows about the 12 steps. Well, that's great but I feel like they're very surface level sometimes. And even though those are big, I mean, there's deep, deep healing that goes along with that. Sometimes it's, it's just not enough for people who are more spiritually open and minded. So um, really, you know, I know I'm going to butcher the name, you know, when, when we do our ninth step, um, which is making amends with people, there's certain people that we can't physically or verbally make amends to because it's just not going to be healthy. And so, what I feel like there's the Hawaiian healing Hopo Pono Ono. <laughs> I know I said that wrong, but you know, it's the idea of just like sending loving kindness and forgiveness and healing to someone, even if you don't necessarily want to talk to them. <laughs> so, um, you know, being able to incorporate that and being able to discuss how that could help you through your recovery journey. So over the next, let's say 12 months, if you could really take this and start developing that, what would you like to see happen? I would really love to have just, um, you know, a good core group of people that we can rely on each other. If I want to call someone up and get, you know what, I just ha did this past life regression, you know, th hypnotherapy session, and I had this, this, and this come up, and I see how that's played out in my life now, I want to have a group of people that I can discuss that with. Right now it's very limited and it's um, not that it holds me back, but I feel like it would be easier for a, a big group of people to relate that way rather than, you know, really just kind of keeping it to themselves. So, and as a hypnotherapist, that's exactly what, what I love focusing on is, is that healing really deep soul healing. Talk to me a little about the hypnotherapy. I've actually interviewed a number of people in hypnotherapy and what, um, <laughs> What is your experience with that? Oh gosh, I I love it. Like it makes me giddy. That really that's that's my passion. But I feel like that can be incorporated into what I'm doing now. Um, when I was 12, I learned about Carl Jung and all of the subconscious. You know, kind of um, you know the system of having our subconscious conscious and, and how that works. I've been interpreting dreams for, for that long as well. So as I got older, I became more and more just enthralled with all of his teachings. And um, it must have been 2010. I first found out about hypnotherapy and started the training for that. Um, kind of got derailed. I had kids, I had family moved across the country, you know, kind of did all that. And then just a, a few years ago, decided to finish up my training. And um, it, to me, it's, it's really, truly amazing how many people I can touch um, just through hypnotherapy. You know, I've had a client who her next step was going to be a neurologist and she came to me first and I don't think she's quite at the point where she recognizes the hypnotherapy really helped her 
<laughs> but she, you know, in talking to her, the results that she wanted, she's getting them. And, um, you know, other people who it's just self-confidence issues for um, repressed memories for, you know, whatever it might be. Um, I've named my hypnotherapy practice, well, and eventually my life coaching practice, um, Soulful Existence. Because I do believe that we all have just a soul that we, um, we have to nurture that as much as we nurture our physical and mental states as well. So for me, the hypnotherapy allows me to do that with people. Well, it sounds like you have an amazing story that you're just getting started off to. Congratulations again on 15 months. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's and a, it's a huge journey. So uh, Jennifer, I want to just thank you for jumping on the program today and uh, having a conversation. Thank you so much. I love sharing everything I can about this. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in and checking us out. New episodes are coming out every few days, including lots of conversations with massively successful coaches sharing their secrets with you. So be sure to subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel so that you don't miss out. And if you're looking for a way to start making serious money from your coaching, you need to check out my free training. It's at williamwinterton.com. I lay out the step-by-step -step on how to start making five figures a month in the next 60 days. Check it out, williamwinterton.com. I'll see you next time.